Alrighty boys, today we have an Indy Trail recoil. We're gonna be putting a new rope in this sled. So this is gonna be kind of like a general how-to on how to put ropes in in pretty much any snowmobile, but specifically this is off an Indy Trail fan cooled. 488. I'm sure yeah. I'm sure the Indy recoils are very similar to this. This is how the inside looks. It's always easier to replace the rope before it breaks because otherwise you have to rewind the tension. And a general rule of thumb is you don't want to put too much tension on it because you don't want to bottom out the spring. And that's how you snap those little high tension springs underneath there. And you know you can rewrap those springs and you can put new ones in and all that, but it's a lot of more work. Um, and I have done it a few times. It's just not a fun job. Uh, you can see how this recoil works. When you kick it, it has like a little spring-loaded dog that kicks that out and then engages into a cup on the flywheel. <clears throat> so basically all we're going to do is I'm going to have Saul, he's going he's to pull the rope out. He'll just keep pulling it out all the way out. Yep, so there he goes. So he's going to pull it out and then he's going he's gonna to let me hang on to it. You can let go of the rope. Okay. Now you're going to take the pick and kind of dig out the knotted up piece in there. Might be a little stuck, because it could could have been in there for... I always want to get the, the guy that's holding the the wind, uh, his finger with the pick. So you can see right there, we're just pulling that out. Yep, you got it. Yep, now you can pull the rope all the way through, or cut, actually want to untie the knot on that end. So like I said, Spark just tied a quick bow there. Basically, he's just going to try to get that knot out. And then now he'll just pull out the rope uh, that way. So you can see the old rope, and we're basically just going to match it up. It's about that same size. Um, the length wise, I think it's close. Might be a little bit longer, but we'll just see how close it was. Oh yeah, but within a foot. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, all you can you just you can always cut the excess off. So yeah. now what we're going to do is we got to feed it. Hang on to that real quick. We got to feed it back through the top, through the little uh, inlet right here. Yep, and then it's going to have to go up up and, and through. through, so it's going to be a little tricky. Sure. Hey boys, so we decided, you know, we wanted to feed it in from the outside in, and then you got to go in here and try to reach it through that hole. Well, we just figured, let's put it in from the top, feed it through, go through the grommet on the outside, as I'm kind of fishing it through there. You may have to take a pick from the back side and just kind of grab it. Yeah, here, you want to push a little bit more through, and I'll try to get my my pick in here and push yeah, just kind of hook it and... There you go. Like so. I just need to give her one more hook. And there she comes out the other end. You just grab a hold of it. Give that a little pull as the other guy kind of feeds. Yep. You just kind of keep pulling it out. Yep. Just pull it through. And we'll pull and that right up until the very end, end and then we'll knot it. Because yep. then you can always cut some off the other end, guys. Exactly. That now we'll tie our knot. Through. And I'm, like I said, I'm I, the whole time this is going on, I'm He's holding the tension yep. tight. <clears throat> Exactly how it was when I took it apart. Exactly. So, so I'm holding it with my finger. You can always take a vice grip and lightly push together, right. and then you don't have to do it. You don't have another guy have to hold it. So, so what I do, guys, a lot of times when I do snow blowers and a lot of stuff, I tie a knot kind of closer to the. I'll work it up to the end here a little bit, and then I'll kind of like. Well, I think, I think this one here, I might be able to just do a single knot. I might be able to just do it like this. I wanted to do a double where I double knot it again like this, but it's not, it the channel it has to sit in isn't very enough? big. Yeah. I'm gonna go and get two pairs of pliers and we're gonna have each of us tug on each end of that. And once that's done, there's never gonna pull through. So I'm gonna have him hold that and grab two pairs of pliers. Alrighty boys, so he's gonna take one pair of pliers on this end of the knot. I got this end. Basically we're gonna just pull that knot together. And that's not coming off. So. And then we just basically take it. Try to get it into that little uh, channel there. Which <clears throat> may be difficult. Maybe have to use the pick or uh, maybe a, you know, maybe a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver to push it in there, potentially. Let's try to get it down in there. And kind of pull and push as you're kind of doing that, guys. Alrighty guys, so we basically just tuck the knot down in the channel, let the little tail hang out, because it should pile it inside the cuff and it shouldn't really hurt anything. Um, and then I tied a little safety knot, because 
We're gonna put this back on the machine and then this is obviously gonna hook to your recoil handle. So yep. you always tie a little quick one, <clears throat> just in case it, it would pull through, you don't want to redo your, all your work then. again. So yep. that's basically it, you can check for operation. The dog kicks out, it's got good spring recoil. A good rule of thumb is you could always like brake clean it out and then put some good lubricant spray and kind of get the get everything lubricated. But this one here is in quite good shape. So we're just gonna leave it as is um, and hope for the best. I might spray a little bit of lube in there and call it a day. And uh, w when we got the knot in, guys, he just kind of held the rope and slowly let it wind back up. Yep, yep. Um, you don't really necessarily want to let it go flying in. Yep. Um, and then the old rope, if you want to show them that. Well, that we uh, changed it, guys, so it was just about to break. preventative maintenance so. right there. We can take this and throw it away. Yeah. This recoil rope, I'll try to find a link to an Amazon link. Or I'll, I'll link something on Amazon for this rope. I got this in a six pack on eBay for cheap. And this stuff's really good quality stuff. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's, it's braided. They got the ends nice and uh, melted so melted it won't fray. Up. So you should be good. But yeah, this general rule of thumb is just, you know, most recoils all operate the same, but skidoos are a little funky. They have an eccentric drive. Um, Players and Yamaha mm -hmm. use this dog style, so other than that, that should be it.